Hi guys, Muskan Agarwal here again. So here we are with another video on load balances. Since in the last video we discussed about scaling, horizontal and vertical scaling. I hope you understood the concept. Uh, the concept. Now in this video we will understand that whenever we scale our system, what all things we have to handle. Like in the horizontal scaling, we uh, saw that we can add more and more servers to our uh, pool or our distributed system and we can remove our servers if the load or traffic is not that much. That uh, like we should not keep our servers idle. So we can add them, add them up based on the traffic income, income traffic and we can remove them if the load is not that much. So uh, why, uh, like in the horizontal scaling, once you add up or you remove your servers, they, you have to balance the traffic, right? You have to uh, ensure that request incoming should be handled by all the servers in your system, in your distributed systems. So how you will do that? Right, you can keep on adding up your servers, but how you will uh, make sure that not only one single server is handling all your requests. So like uh, for let's say exam um, example, in last video we have seen, uh, this is our web tier, right? We have multiple servers over here, server one, we have server two and so on, so on. We have server, lot of servers in our pool or this is our distributed system to handle lot of requests, right? So multiple requests are coming in. Multiple requests are coming in. How you'll make sure that not only one server, that is that only one server, server one is handling all the requests. And like what I mean to say is all the requests are being distributed over among all the servers, right? No one's uh, not no one single server is handling all the requests. So it will result into a bottleneck, server bottleneck, right? So for that, um, either you have to write your own algorithm so that all the requests coming in are distributed equally among all the servers, or you can use a concept of load balances, load balancing, we say. Let me first discuss about the manual thing and then we'll move towards the load balancing, right? So. What happens is you can uh, like agar hamar pas, uh, let's say suppose five servers hai. Take him. This are these are server one, server two, server three, server four, and server five, right? And we have hundred and thousands of users. Koi bhi user hamari site se hamare app se interact karta, we have a we have an user ID for that user, right? So what we can do is one way is to we can write an algorithm or configuration that user IDs ending with uh, one like the request which are coming from the user user whose user id ends with one they will be redirected to server one similarly user ids ending with two request will be redirected to server two three to server three four to server four or five to server five now you will say that what will happen to all other user ids which will end with six seven or something so in that case we can use a hash function right so what we can do is uh, we have a user id we will pass it through the hash function we will generate a hash value so that hash value will give us only hash value from this array from this list one two three four five so even if uh, let's say suppose i have 28 and my hash function is mod of um, five so it will give me hash value of three. So this uh, three will be redirected to server three. So user ID with uh, user ID equals 28 will be redirected to server three. So this is one of the method and it seems fine, right? It will help you balance all your requests to all your servers. And uh, whenever you can add up the server, when you add up the server, you can just add uh, like modify your hash function and hash values and you can remove your servers and you can modify again. So it seems quite fine, right? But what if, what if your server wo, uh, server one goes down? So what will happen to all the requests, all the requests coming from the user IDs ending with one? Now, which server will handle them? 
the, these requests and what will happen to those requests right so in that case you, you again you have to do some manual uh, configuration manual implementation or something so there are certain edge cases you'll keep on implementing those or handling those edge cases but you'll miss some of them so for that case there is a concept again load balancing it, these are publicly available like load balancers concept you just have to configure them in your uh, distributed system so what uh, what they do is you have like a pool the load balancers have a sort of pool right there is one load balancer it has a pool in that pool you um, add up your servers or remove your servers like this is server 1 server 2 server 3 and server 4 okay so this is your distributed system a pool of load balancers you add up your servers and now the the load balancer will take care of balancing and everything like uh, failure handling if your server goes down if your server one goes down so it will redirect all the requests to other other available servers others active servers like s2 s3 and s4 if server one goes down and even if you uh, add up your servers like s5 and s6 so it will make sure that all the requests will be distributed among all the servers like including s5 and s6 so it uses lot of concepts like uh, consistent hashing chain open chaining there are a lot of concepts we will deep dive into them slowly slowly but as of now just understand that load balancer basically uh, handles all the incoming client request redirect to the pool of servers that we make sure to add or remove based on our uh, traffic incoming it's our um, our task just to add the servers remove the servers based on the incoming traffic and rest thing is handled by load balances a failure handling distribution of the request and um, yeah and scaling out the request like which server if if uh, in case that if one server is handling lot of requests so it will uh, make sure that other that uh, server load will be distributed among all other servers so that it won't be a point of bottleneck right so it handles a lot thing like there are m multiple publicly available load balances one of them i think nginx is there and there are multiple you can just go through their docs understand what load balances are so first concept we understood why they are important now the another important reason for using load balancers is security security as in uh, see all servers all these server 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 one server two s s3 if you would have gone through my first video i have uh, we have discussed about ip address concept so same thing here also every server has an ip address and a client and a client uh, communicates with the server through its ip address right so every server has their public ip right public ip for server 2 public ip for server 3 and public ip for server so if you expose this to client if you expose this to client uh, it could uh, like result in security breach like um, any malicious act, um, attack could happen through that IP address since they have their uh, our IP address they can use it they can make an IP call to our uh, to our server and do anything right so load balances eliminates uh, this probability how whenever this uh, this pool whenever we add up the servers load balances uses the public ip addresses of all servers and exposes its own private ip address to the client so client has no information no access to our servers it just communicates with the load balancer so this is till here the server layer or the web tier layer is completely hidden from the user so uh, what happens now is user is there user or it's a it's an app client or a web client or something it communicates directly with load balancers load balancer through an ip address through a private ip address okay and then load balancer taking the request from the user it redirects that to for the like servers available who, who all are the active servers it will redirect those requests for, uh, taking from taken from the user to the servers so it eliminates the probability of security breach over here the point of contact is only load balances they have no information about our servers our database anything nothing only the load balancer thing cool i hope you understood the concept of um, load balances that's all in this video if you have any doubts please drop in the comment section also please do like 
शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब थैंक यू